The second most important infection is joint infection. Uh, in this situation, we have some risk uh, that may affect the joint viability and the joint mobility and the joint function in the future if not treated well. And this is a little bit different from the uh, osteomyelitis. To have joint infection, usually the same the same way of uh, of spread of uh, germs, uh, they may be a wide, uh, direct contamination by wounds, by surgery, by uh, a nearby infection, or indirect in, uh, infection, as as in hematogenous osteomyelitis. The difference between uh, bones and jo and joints is that there we have the cartilage that lines the healing cartilage that lines uh, the um, bone ends and covers covers them and uh, helps in the in joint mobility and distribution of weight and, and they are very important for joint factor uh, for joint uh, action or mobility so if we have an infection as we see here in the joint they may be destruction of the hyaline cartilage because the hyaline cartilage uh, nutrition depends on the joint fluid when the joint fluid is contaminated is contaminated by the uh, by uh, germs and by uh, the uh, the ex the exudates and uh, uh, the dis uh, germs destruction and the presence of pus so and what they have from interleukin, TNF-alpha, and, uh, and other destructive factors, uh, they, there will be destruction of this area, of, of this very important area, uh, with, uh, which cause which cause the cartilage erosion and, destru uh, and destruction. So, this will cause loss of joint function and loss of uh, joint motion in the future, either by, uh, and cause either ankylosis or uh, even arthrodis in some severe cases. In infants, uh, the uh, the epiphysis may be affected, as well as the joint uh, cave team. But in older children, uh, in, uh, they may we may have necrosis of, of epiphyseal bone. If we do not treat the uh, acute uh, septic arthritis, we may um, rarely there may be uh, complete resolution. It's not uh, it's not uh, a usual situation. It's not ordinary situation or result. But uh, the, usually we have partial loss of articular cartilage and fibrosis, and uh, that leads to ankylosis or even arthrodesis and bone destruction and bone defor and joint deformity. In clinical features, the, uh, uh, what is important is that in newborn infants and the patients who, who are less than one, years old, uh, one year old, uh, as we have said in, in osteomyelitis, there may be osteomyelitis and uh, concomitant uh, uh, septic arthritis. And, uh, usually, the, we have severe pain, uh, high temperature, and inability to uh, to move the the, the the joint, and the cause is either is uh, the umbilical cord or intravenous infusion site or uh, the spine or and the abdomen. We should pay attention to concomitant osteomyelitis. In, uh, in uh, older children, the pseudoparesis or pseudoparalysis usually is, uh, is uh, more obvious. And the patient uh, is not able to move his uh, joint and we are not able to move his joint freely because the spasm around, muscular spasm around the joint, infected joint. In adults, usually we have a swollen, painful, and inflamed uh, joint, as we see here, and all movements are, are restricted. Uh, if we have hematogenous uh, septic arthritis in adults, especially in only in monoarthritis, we should search for a gonococcal infection, as we will see later. 
In radiological study, we see in, uh, in uh, using the echography or the ultrasonography, we, should, we see the effusion, joint effusion in all cases. And in, in, uh, on X-ray examination, usually they are normal in general, but we may have a, a soft tissue swelling, we may have a widening of joint space because of the hyper uh, of the increased pressure in the uh, in the joint, and sometimes mild subluxation, even mild subluxation, especially in the hip in children, and with the chocolate we may have some gas in the joint. This is uh, uh, this is specific for the uh, infection by uh, Ischer chocolate. Uh, late features we may have narrowing and irregularity of joint, and usually we may have some loss of. Uh, of density in the bones around the joint. In MRI and radionuclide, usually they are used for deep, unreachable uh, joints, as in sacroiliac joints and sternoclavicular joints. And they are uh, diagnostic for uh, septic arthritis. The most important uh, investigation tool is the as uh, joint aspiration. We do, we do two things in joint, uh, during joint aspiration either direct examination and uh, culture. Uh, direct examination, we, uh, we investigate the white blood cells in the, uh, the, in the joint fluid. First of all, we, no we note the color and uh, the presence of clear or turbid uh, or uh, hemorrhagic fluid in, in the articulation in the joint. And then, in, in laboratory study, we, we study uh, the, the presence, the count of white blood cells, the level of sugar, and the level of proteins. Usually, in, in, in normal joints, uh, we may have uh, less than 300 uh, white blood cells in, in per milliliter. In non-infective inflammatory uh, disorders, as in gout, as in... Uh, uh, calcium perphosphate, um, uh, we may have uh, more than uh, 10,000 uh, 10, uh, white blood cells in uh, per milli milliliter. And, but in septic arthritis, the count rises uh, more than uh, above 50%, 50 50,000 uh, white blood cells per milliliter. And the general blood uh, investigation as white blood cells, ESR, CRP, and blood culture are important to monitor and to diagnose this situation. Uh, we should identify uh, septic arthritis from uh, um, acute osteomyelitis and from uh, soft tissue infections, from trauma, irritable joint, as we will see later, and hemophilic bleeding, rheumatic fever, and sickle cell disease, gosher disease, and gut and pseudogut. The treatment, the first, uh, the first step in, uh, in, uh, in treating and diagnosis septic arthritis is, is make a, a joint puncture and make a testing for this, um, this articular fluid to identify the count of white blood cells and to identify the germs if they are present by direct uh, examination and by uh, culture and sensitivity tests. And what we do, as we, say, as we have said, if we have, if we have pus in the, in the joint, we should go directly to, uh, to surgical drainage and irrigation and cleaning of the joint mm -hmm. by uh, a large number of fluids, of, uh, of liters, uh, and, to, uh, to, and to give uh, antibiotics intravenously for, for seven days, even, uh, even 14 days, and then continue per os uh, for two, three uh, more days on, on oral antibiotics. And we, uh, we should make general separative treatment as uh, antalgics, uh, analgesia, and uh, uh, protecting the limb by, uh, by doing a, um, a splint, may, uh, fabricating splint, uh, splints or a limb traction. Uh, the, the, the delayed treatment, if we, if we do not uh, treat this infection, if they, may, they may cause um, uh, concomitant osteomyelitis and they may affect the, uh, the joint viability and they may cause sometimes subluxation or dislocation of the joint, especially as we've said, the hip. 
if uh, the if the epiphysis and the cartilaginous phases uh, is uh, affected, they may cause uh, retarded growth and destruction of the epiphysis and deformity of the joint. Even uh, osteonecrosis of the epiphysis uh, may be caused by infection, or at the end, may co may, uh, this may cause ankylosing, uh, ankylosis of the joint or even arthrodesis in some cases. In gonococcal arthritis, this is sexual transmitted disease. Sexual transmitted diseases uh, the, uh, is caused by gonorrhea, Neisseria gonorrhea. Usually, the infection is transmitted uh, via the first uh, after the first uh, or single contact by uh, uh, for more than 50% of chance of uh, contamination. Uh, the, usually we have some uh, or many uh, clinical uh, situations here as disseminated infection as polyarthritis, tenosynovitis or even dermatitis or monoarthritis, especially the knee or the big, uh, the big uh, joints, knee, ankle, shoulder and wrist. So we, we should always suspect uh, the presence of gonococcal infection, gonorrhea, uh, if we have monoarthritis in adults, sexually active adults. Usually we have a slight, uh, a slight fever and the uh, blood investigations are raised. As, as um, all, all uh, septic arthritis, we have pain and inflamed, inflamed joint. Uh, we, should, uh, we should always ask for uh, the, uh, the, the sexual or recent sexual relationships. And if, they, if we have uh, other uh, genitourinary infection or the morning pus uh, gutlet, uh, from, uh, from the penis in the, uh, in the males, and uh, the, always we should uh, make a joint puncture and to, to identify, the, as we have said, the presence of the germs and the, uh, the presence of high, uh, high concentration of white blood cells. The treatment usually, this situation usually is treated easily by antibiotics and it's very sensitive. We use the third generation cephalosporin uh, intravenously uh, or uh, intramuscularly uh, or quinolones uh, antibiotics or even if we uh, chlamydia is suspected we, we may use ampicillin or uh, amoxicillin and clavulanic acid. In children we may have a situation that resembles a joint or hip infection, but it's not an infection. It is the irritable hip or transient synovitis, or in French we call it rhume, uh, rhume, uh, de, rhume de la hanche. Uh, the cause it's uh, it's not known, but it's a reaction uh, of of al or al allergy to a viral uh, infection, follows viral infection, or because of trauma, or because of uh, uh, other kind of allergy, uh, type of synovitis in the hip in children. And the real cause is not very, very, uh, it's, it's not well known, but usually it's a reaction to other uh, infection or other uh, thing than the, the infection. The, the age of uh, happening or age of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, situation, uh, the age group is about between three and eight years old. Usually we have pain in groin or and limp in children, and we have made pain even in the knee in children. So we should always identify in children, uh, we should always examine the hip when we have a uh, painful knee in the children. Uh, and the, the patient or the child uh, may have limp and uh, especially after acti uh, especially after activity. Uh, clinically, we may have a uh, slight muscle wasting and limitation, a slight limitation of motion. We do not have usually pseudoparesis or pseudoparalysis because we may. It's not a very severe uh, situation or very severe in, uh, inflammation in the synovium. But it's painful. Uh, the patient have has uh, painful movements. 
Uh, on echo, on the radiographic study, we may have a kind of joint effusion. Uh, usually, the, the general situation of the patient is, uh, is good. We do not have high fever. We do not have even fever. We do not have uh, a loss of activity uh, in children. But we have only some limp or some kind of limp or painful limb. Usually the, the signs and symptoms continue for one uh, for one or two weeks, and they reveal spontaneously. The, we should always identify this, especially uh, this situation, especially in older ages, after six years of uh, six years of age. Uh, for, we should differentiate it from birth disease, from uh, uh, sleep epiphases, from tuberculosis, uh, synovitis, urinary chronic arthritis, or even ankylosing spondylitis. And the most important is to differentiate it from septic arthritis because the treatment is very, very different. Uh, different. The treatment of irritable hip depends on the of bed rest and reduced activity with some antalgics or, or anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, usually this is uh, sufficient to uh, control the situation and to have a complete resolution of, pay, of, of, of signs and symptoms within a few days. But we should always uh, um, uh, put in mind that any deterioration of signs and symptoms of the children, we should suspect the presence of uh, septic arthritis. We should repeat the echo, echographic examination, evaluation, and we should repeat the blood uh, investigation to identify if there is any deterioration of, uh, of this situation. Uh, usually, weight bearing is allowed when the when the symptoms appear uh, disappear and uh, the infusion resolves. You sometimes they, we we may have some recurrence of this situation, but it's a banal situation. It's a benign situation that we do not. Uh, it's um, uh, we may not worried about.